my name is Alex Queen, the assistant editor at the American Journal of Medicine. I'm here with Dr. Albert, our editor-in-chief. As you know, Dr. Albert, injected drug abuse is a big problem today in the U.S. In this uh, month's journal, we have a research study about injected drug use and endocarditis. What can you tell us about it? Yes, well, uh, as you've said, Alex, this is a huge problem uh, and an increasing problem. Um, when one injects drugs, uh, of course, and uh, using street drugs, these are not sterile. So you introduce bacteria into your bloodstream and a significant number of people develop infections in the heart, so-called endocarditis, as a result of these injections. And uh, injected drug use uh, endocarditis is a horrendous disease. Uh, so this report from the Beth Israel uh, Hospital in Boston uh, looked at 10 years of uh, uh, injected drug endocarditis. They came up with 100 patients in 10 years. That's almost one patient per month. So this is not as common as pneumonia, you know, or, or uh, gallbladder disease, but it's still a major problem. And uh, these were young people between the ages of 20 and 49, the overwhelming majority of them. And the mortality rate over the next year was 25%. So that means a quarter of them, of these young people, are dead within a year. So we're talking about a very nasty, that, that ranks with some of the worst cancers. Um, and of course there were multiple other complications because what happens when the bacteria get into the heart, they create uh, clotted uh, areas uh, on the valves and pieces break off and can go to the brain and the kidney and so forth. So um, endocarditis is a, a horrendous disease. One of the interesting points about this is that when I was uh, back in medical school and all the new antibiotics were coming out, people said, oh, endocarditis will soon not be a big problem. It's a bigger problem today than it was then because of injected drugs, because of people who are on immunosuppressive agents, people who have diseases that knock down their immune system. So uh, uh, endocarditis is uh, unfortunately alive and well. One of the disturbing things about this article was that the people at the Beth Israel, which is a Harvard hospital, a superb hospital, very few of these people got uh, addiction counseling. And that may have been one of the reasons why a third of them were readmitted. Many of them were seen by social work, but, you know, social workers are running around like crazy trying to see everybody. They, they can give some quick advice, but they actually at the Beth Israel have an addiction counseling nurse. And only 25% of those patients got to see the addiction counseling nurse. And that may have been one of the factors, as pointed out by the authors, why there was such a high mortality. So clearly there's a message here. When we get these folks in the hospital, we really need to spe spend a lot of time working with trying to get them into rehab. Now we know often that fails, but at least we should try because we're talking about a disease with a very high death rate. And what drugs are they injecting? Well, it's predominantly heroin, uh, still our old friend heroin, uh, which as you know, uh, is a, it's a, a variation on morphine. It's actually two morphine molecules put together. And it's legal in some countries, used uh, you know, for pain. For example, the English use uh, you know, heroin. Um, but it never got on the legal list here in the United States. So it's predominantly heroin. But you know, street drugs, you never know what you're getting because it's not something that's uh, FDA approved and comes from the pharmacy. It's uh, something that's being put together in apartments and, and places. Uh, so it, there, there may be other stuff in there, and there usually is other stuff in there because you don't get pure heroin that keeps getting cut in order to increase the profit. Um, so there are a number of agents in there that cause a whole variety of other problems, pulmonary problems and so forth, uh, along with the filth, along with the bacteria. So, uh, and, and there's no way to know what you're getting, uh, uh, except that uh, heroin is still the, the major factor that people are looking for. And what can you tell our clinicians? Well, I think the clinicians, the message, you know, is just what I said, that these folks need not only antibiotics, but we really need to get psychiatry or a, a, an addiction uh, person involved with them, um, because we know that down the road, within a year, a quarter of them are going to be dead. Um, and often, of course, the organisms, the bugs, the bacteria that they get infected with are, are often resistant and very difficult to deal with. So even from the antibiotic point of view, they're a problem, but then, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the risk for re recurrence and, and taking the drugs again and getting reinfected is terrible. And by the way, two-thirds of these people were hepatitis C positive. So there's a second factor that, that really says 
These folks really have to get off their drugs. They need to get in rehab. They need to get a, a, a longer-term medical attention. They are very, very sick. Okay, thank you very much.